Okay. Today I am presenting immutable array buffers for stage one. I'm Mark Miller of Agoric, and my co-champions on this proposal are Peter Hoddy of Modable, uh, Richard Gibson of Agoric, uh, and Jack Works, who is um, uh, here at the meeting in general, but not yet in the room. Um, as a stage one proposal, the focus should be on a problem to be solved rather than the specifics of how we plan to solve it, although explaining the specifics as an example is certainly uh, good for illustration. So the problem statement is the need for immutable bulk binary data. And this has several motivations. Uh, modable, uh, in particular, well, embedded JavaScript, JavaScript for devices, uh, such as standardized by TC53 and implemented by Modable in their XS engine, is in a situation where ROM is much more is much cheaper and more plentiful than RAM in many target embedded devices. So there is a big need for embedded devices that if you have a bunch of data, like you know images, for example a bunch of data that in fact is not going to change at runtime, you would like to be able to place it in ROM without having to do crazy bookkeeping to pretend that it's, that it's mutable. Uh, right now, in fact, people doing JavaScript for embedded place data in ROM, uh, making it in fact immutable, but they do it by cheating, by, by deviating from the spec. Uh, we want to heal that by enabling them to do that within the conformance spec language, spec language. We've heard from several people, I believe including uh, Kevin Gibbons, uh, um, the, but we've heard from several people that on the web there is an, ob that we've observed various patterns of defensive copying, that, that one API receives a bunch of data and because they, they need it to be stable and they can't count on the provider of the data not mutating it, that the receiver then makes their own copy. And especially when the data in question is bulk binary data, uh, that's a that can be a very expensive copy. So it would be good to be able to get the same level of defensiveness without needing to do defensive copying. Agent is the JavaScript name for a separate unit of concurrency, like a worker. Uh, the general term is agent. And by normal agent here, uh, I want to d distinguish um, uh, agents that are allowed to engage in shared memory multi-threading, allowed to, to use shared array buffers uh, to communicate um, uh, through shared memory uh, versus uh, normal agents that are only able to do communicating event loops, able to communicate through post message. The, on the web at least, we're forcing an opt-in for an agent to be able to engage in shared memory multi-threading, so the common case will remain normal agents, as I'm calling them here. Uh, we would like to enable them to share bulk binary data with at zero copy, without the expense of a copy, and because it's immutable, there is no concurrency problem in sharing the data. Uh, and in fact, depending on how the JavaScript engine coexists with the operating system, uh, they might be able to use the MMU to get MMU protection for the actual data itself. They might be able to map the data into multiple agent address spaces, if the agents are in different address spaces, if they're all in the same address space, then obviously that issue goes away. Similarly, the, uh, to communication between agents within a machine, there's also communication between agents on different machines. So we're participate, Agoric is participating with Sprightly and Cap'n Proto uh, on the, the, the um, uh, standardization of a network protocol, and a remote object capability secure object messaging protocol called, called OCAPN, and that's intended to be an intra-language standard, not a JavaScript specific standard. Uh, so that one contains both bulk strings 
as things that are passed by copy, as well as bulk binary data as just a, basically a, a big array of bytes to be passed by copy. For a language binding, for, for things that are passed by copy over the network, it's very nice to have the local representation be immutable so that it doesn't, diver so that the local copy does not diverge from copies that have been made remotely after the fact. For strings, we've got that perfectly in JavaScript with JavaScript strings. Uh, we'd like to have something similar for bulk binary data. And the result would be something that looks very much like the previous case of uh, sending bulk binary data that's immutable over post message to share between agents within an agent cluster. And the surface form that we, we generally find that we want, we often find we want, and this isn't speaking for everyone, but speaking for the cases you know, we've encountered and our own API taste, is that we generally find that we want at the end of the road a, a, the, to see this stuff through a frozen typed array. Uh, and because typed arrays themselves don't have their own data, but rather their windows onto array buffers, all of the data is in the array buffer, and currently there's no way to create an immutable array buffer. The, this um, uh, has the imp implied restriction that there's no way to create a frozen typed array, uh, and there's no way to shim it. And there's no practical way to shim it. Please. You can certainly store bulk binary data uh, in strings and with the understanding that the strings underlying representation in the typical engine is an, an, an array, a array of 16-bit values, uh, you can even arrange to do it and that those 16-bit values are not constrained to represent characters. You can certainly do that. Um, the Okay, that's a good point. I retract the statement that there's no way to practically shin it. Uh, we would still like a, um, a more natural way to do this, and we would like to be able to, to um, use genuine typed arrays and freeze them. Uh, but, but you are correct. Yeah, that, no, that's a, that's a good point. Um, and since right now we actually have a need for shimming it, uh, that's actually a good practical suggestion for our immediate needs. We should think about that. Um, in any case, there's various places to start. Uh, one is just the JavaScript normal arrays. This seems like an unsuitable place to start because of all of the object-like natures of normal arrays, including things like holes and that any one of the properties might be an accessor property, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, that's not where we chose to start, to start but um, as struct arrays, as Shu presented them as part of the, the structs proposal, uh, as struct arrays mature, maybe we could revisit whether struct arrays might be a good place to start, uh, but that's, um, that's not what we've explored to date. Um, typed arrays itself is, is normally what we want, as I mentioned, but it's not a suitable place to start because it's the typed array has a backing buffer, uh, and the, bu the backing buffer, if it's mutable, uh, the typed array cannot be frozen. Uh, data views have the same problem. They don't have any of their own data. They're just a view onto an array buffer. Uh, the web API has a um, uh, abstraction called the blob. Uh, it's right now, it's just part of the web. It's not part of JavaScript, but we could consider adopting it uh, however, uh, it has 
extra features that are well motivated for the web and for the uses made of blobs, like MIME types, uh, that are really besides the point for what we're asking for. So, um, so Jack Works does have a previous proposal. There's Jack. Um, uh, Jack Works does have a previous proposal. Oh, uh, Jack, let me mention. Uh, I'm recording the presentation itself by permission. Um, uh, I'll turn the recording off before the discussion at the end, but by default, discussion during the presentation will be recorded, I'll, but I can certainly edit things out by, re by request. Okay. Um, uh, the, so Jack Works um, uh, does have a pre previous proposal where he started where we're starting, which is array buffers uh, uh, in his proposal called limited array buffers. And that proposal, for various reasons, did not proceed beyond stage one, but it did get to stage one. And we believe that the current proposal that Jack is a co-champion of um, avoids the impediments that caused the previous one not to proceed beyond stage one. So today we're again starting with array buffers as our place to start. This is an example, are we not, okay, good. So delayed advancement of the projection, that's, that's not unusual, I suppose. Um, the, this is a realistic piece of code authored by Richard Gibson of using the abstractions we're proposing as part of doing a realistic interaction with the protocol. In this case, the net strings pro uh, protocol for communicating binary data between processes. Um, the important expression in this piece of code is just this one. This is the one that does all the interesting work. So this is kind of a preview of the API we're proposing. Uh, buff is a normal typed array into which the data that we want to transmit has been placed. Transfer to immutable uh, does a transfer analogous to the existing transfer and transfer to fixed size operations. Does a transfer to immutable, creating a new immutable array buffer, detaching the original, and the, and the only reason for that is so that we can create a typed array on it that we can freeze. And then the rest of this just makes use of the fact that now we have a stable frozen typed array. Um, okay, so. Until recently, this was the entirety of the array buffer API. Uh, it has a slice method for uh, extracting out a subrange by copy into a new mutable array buffer. And it has a getter only accessor for getting the, the length of the array. Since then, we've added uh, these three methods, uh, transfer, transfer to fixed length, and resize. And we've added these additional getter only accessors. Um, and what these transfer things do is they create other flavor, they, they, well, the transfer, we start with transfer, it just creates a new array buffer that's like the original, detaching the original, and the reason it detaches the original is so that it can create the new one with the same data without having to copy it. So that's a zero copy transfer of exclusive access to the data. Uh, transfer to fixed length is similar, but it creates a flavor of a non-resizable array buffer, which is one that's less mutable than the original if the original was resizable, but contains all the same data. Um, for a resizable one, it, the resize operation. And then uh, these first two getter-only accessors, detached and resizable, uh, lets you look at an array buffer and see what flavor you've got. So now let's step through the flavors. Uh, this API already enables three flavors of array buffer. There's the resizable array buffer for which the interesting operation is resize. Um, it's identified with the resizable being true. Uh, and it has, it's interestingly has both a byte length and a max byte length, which can be different uh, in that the max byte length is what you pre-allocate where, where the byte length can grow up to that limit transfer to fixed length 
creates something that's less mutable than a resizable array buffer in that, you, in that the size is no longer mutable. Uh, and in this one, the resize method is useless. If you call it on a non-resizable array buffer, I believe it throws. Um, and the getter-only accessor identifies this case by the resizable accessor returning false. And then uh, the, uh, all of the transfer operations, what they leave behind is a detached array buffer in which the detached uh, accessor returns true to identify it. Um, and, the, and, and all of the other members, both methods and accessors, are useless. The reason I went through the existing API is um, we're, we're very happy to have fit the functionality that we're looking for very naturally as an extension of the API we already have so as to um, minimize conceptual cost, minimize, uh, have it be a very natural additional API to learn given that you've learned the existing API. So, uh, so like transfer to fixed length reduces the mutability of, creates a new array buffer detaching the original where the new array buffer is less mutable. Transfer to immutable is similar. It detaches the original, creates a new array buffer with the same data, zero copy. Um, but the new array buffer is much more, um, uh, has much more reduced mutability. In particular, all of the data is now immutable. Uh, and there's a corresponding uh, getter-only accessor, uh, immutable, that identifies this. So this API enables the following additional flavor, uh, which is the immutable query for this one returns true, and slice continues to work um, uh, because that's just a query. It doesn't modify anything. But but since the thing is immutable, you also cannot detach it. So none of the other operations, uh, resize or any of the transfers, work on this flavor. Uh, and an important thing to know, and this is a, a difference with the previous limited array buffers, is uh, with this API, a array buffer that's immutable is born immutable and is forever immutable. Uh, and an array buffer that's not immutable is born not immutable and is forever not immutable. So there's no, there's no making it immutable in place. Um, and that's, that's similar with the not being non-resizable. You don't make a resizable array buffer non-resizable. You make a new one that's not resizable, it's born not resizable, and stays not resizable forever or until it's detached. Okay. To enable frozen typed arrays as a consequence of immutable array buffers, uh, we're, doing, we're proposing uh, to modify the typed array specification in a way that fits very well with what Shu presented earlier uh, as the prevent extensions modification of the typed array specification, uh, which is uh, Right now, typed arrays, all of the indexed properties of a typed array um, are dealt with by this block, uh, by this special handling block in the uh, specification, the special case for typed arrays for indexed properties. For anything other than indexed property, it just falls back to the normal get on property. But for indexed properties, um, what we've been doing till now is they always describe themselves as configurable writable. Uh, and they needed to do that because uh, for both resizing and detaching purposes, they have, to, they, they have to be configurable in order to account for the, for, the, for the future changes that might happen. And also because the data value can be changed, they have to be writable. Um, what we did for prevent extensions is we allowed them for non-resizable array buffers, but we prohibit it for resizable array buffers for, this, for a similar philosophy in order to account for what mutations are possible in the future or 
if those mutations are not possible, to enable the typed array to visibly commit to stability that it will actually have. So what this, um, in, what this particular specification does is it says, if you make a typed array on an immutable array buffer, then all of the index properties of that typed array are born non-configurable, non-writable data properties and are therefore forever that way. Um, and once again, it's important to point out, a typed array made on an, an, on an array buffer is forever a typed array on that array buffer. There's also no ability anywhere in the language to change what the typed array is a window on. So to sum up that point, the, uh, when you make a typed array on these various flavors of buffer, if you make it on a resizable one, you cannot prevent extensions. If you make it on a non-resizable one, you can. If you make a typed array on a detached array buffer, or the, or the array buffer you've made the typed array on detaches, then the typed array is, is useless. And finally, a typed array on an immutable array buffer is a typed array that you can freeze. There's also the issue that's outside the JavaScript specification, but is increasingly uh, part of JavaScript uh, on more and more hosts, including non-browser hosts. Uh, Structure Clone obviously started as a creature of the browser and web APIs, um, but it's in general a common way to account for the semantics of communicating between agents, for example, by post message. Uh, and Structure Clone, uh, the API lets you say which things you want to transfer and which things you want to copy. And, and if you don't say you want to transfer it, then you're implicitly copying. So on a resizable array buffer or a non-resizable array buffer, it would uh, copy it with the overhead of copying because the original and, and new one are both mutable and they, can, and they then mutate separately. Uh, or you can do a zero copy transfer leaving behind a detached one. Uh, doing structure clone on a detached array buffer is again useless. Um, doing structured clone, here's the interesting part, which is doing structure clone on an immutable array buffer can do zero copy sharing of the data. The, it will create a new array buffer as a new object with a new object identity, but it can directly share the same underlying data if the implementation is able to share that data between the, the, the communicating parties. And because it can't be detached, um, uh, you can't transfer it if we maintain the, the, the semantics, the implied semantics, the transfer means that the original party loses it. Um, so, the open questions in the proposal as we've written it down is transfer and transfer to fixed length both have a new length property, I'm sorry, a new length argument, uh, an optional new length argument. There is two stances you, one can take with regard to the transfer to immutable. One is orthogonality. You can um, you know, resize the thing before you transfer to immutable. Since you're about to detach the original anyway, there's no particular reason not to resize it to, to what you want. Um, or there's the other orthogonality, which is the other two have the parameter, it would be least surprised to have the parameter here as well. So that's, that's an open question. The slice operation, because it creates a, a new mutable array buffer, uh, cannot be zero copy even if the original is an immutable array buffer. Uh, and that seems like a missed opportunity or would be a missed opportunity uh, in particular, a missed opportunity to do what uh, Jack Works did in his earlier uh, limited array buffer proposal, which is to be able to create a window, a narrower window onto the array buffer, but do it at zero copy cost, 
so that then you could have typed arrays that reveal only that window of data rather than revealing the entirety of the data. And that's especially relevant potentially in the case where the underlying original thing is some you know, large flat address space like you, like you have in a WASM-like world. Um, so slice to immutable could be like slice but producing an immutable flavor of array buffer and if both the original and the new one are, are immutable, then obviously uh, you, we can do that at zero copy overhead. Um, the uh, Richards presentation on the order of operation on constructing array buffers and, um, uh, and where you get the errors reported. The, um, there's similar uh, questions uh, for, for the implied failures to mutate. Uh, and in particular, because of the history behind array buffers, uh, if you tr if there are ca cases right now where a failure to mutate, uh, such as by assignment to an index property on a detached array buffer, is silent, uh, which is quite annoying, but that's what we've got. Um, so there's an issue going forward of uh, now that we have new reasons for failing to mutate, whether we report them with an error, and if so, which error, and what's the order of operation that determines um, uh, um, uh, which error is reported if multiple things are wrong. And also, I have not mentioned uh, shared array buffer or atomics uh, in the talk so far. Uh, and we really haven't thought about it much. Uh, atomics, as I understand it, you can do all those operations on a normal array buffer. It just doesn't mean very much. Um, uh, so uh, do being able to do them on an immutable array buffer, the query part, seem, seems to make sense. But in any case, uh, as I said, we really haven't examined that. So examining the relationship to shared array buffers and atomics is something uh, to do. Uh, the status is that uh, we've got spec text that deals that talks about both the array buffers and the typed arrays, as I mentioned, and also the data views. We have a partial shim, uh, partial because of the constraints on shimming that I mentioned. Uh, it shims the immutable typed array, and it does it securely in the sense that the type, the, the virtual typed array, the, the emulated typed array that it presents uh, is encapsulates a genuine typed array um, uh, exclusively so that it really does prevent the underlying data from being, from being mutated. But because the encapsulating wrapper is not a built-in array buffer, there's no practical way to create a typed array on the emulated immutable array buffer. Um, and that is our status. And I would like to ask for stage one. And that leads to the discussion for which by agreement I will now turn off the recording.